I actually wanted to leave this out, but yeah, I think I think it's kind of important to point out how it is that we can help and assist from these lessons of Christ. There are many manners in which we can be practical in our faith, be useful in this world, and a gentle reminder to the everyday Christian. The world is not going to smile upon you. The world is not going to change. Things are not going to get better as the generations progress and Christ's coming draws near. Things are going to get worse. What needs to change is not society. What needs to change is not the circular world. It's you and me. That's the only thing that can change towards the end of the world for us to become more Christ-like. Read Revelations, hear where the Christians were and who they were as Christ came upon the earth and hear the conditions of, and the state of affairs in the world when Christ comes. It's not pretty, but we need to improve. We need to change. We need to get better. And how do we get better at being practical Christians in this state with the chaos that South Africa is currently in? Well, first of all, denominations. I wrote this down somewhere, just need to find it. Denominations are invited by our government. So this is on the highest level of church management. Denominations from varying churches influence how policies are made in the country. That's the first place to be practical, to be binding up the broken. Let those policies and the influence that comes from the church be those that are founded in the Bible. Let those be those that are going to help the society and the citizens to be cared for in a Christian manner, whatever they are. And let them, the influence from the church be felt in those policies and in those decisions that are made. May it not be our opinions, but may it be God's express word that guides us. And as denominations, because we read from the same word, it shouldn't be very difficult for us to find out what God says on an issue and come to a consensus as churches before the policy is passed to government. Because otherwise, the, the, the sentiment that will be found, if all of us are varying, is that it's better for the circular opinion to progress because the circular people can agree, but the Christians can't. So. My first recommendation is that on the denomination level, may we be making decisions towards Christ-like, Christ-likeness, can I put it that way? Also, denominations don't just influence policies, they influence their members. They influence the programs that the churches are running. Let those programs carry values of Christian. And I'm not just talking about like a once-off women's meeting and a once-off say no to children abuse ended now. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Let it be consistent. Let it be consistent that we are teaching our fathers. Let it be a value in the church that we do not support abuse. Let the denomination have sanctions. Let fa pe fathers and mothers who abuse their children be sanctioned. In the same way that you sin when you are found in adultery and then the church sanctions you, let a child who is beaten to a pulp, let that parent be sanctioned. Let those values be passed through, not from grassroots, but from the top, from the people who we have trusted to lead us. Like, can you just... Hey! Fine, we can even move to church programs. Let the church programs that we are organizing or that we are passing down to the different local churches, let they, the ones that are mandatory be the ones that are relevant to today's events. Let us not wait for abuse to get to a height before we talk about it. Let us not wait for sexual harassment to get to a height before we talk about it as a church. There are certain things that I think should be ongoing throughout the year and on like constantly running. And unfortunately, we are living in a world where messages like this are more relevant and need to be addressed. So the church needs to take care of that. On the local church side, we need, I think, the local church to partake in like the most active and practical form of Christianity. So right now we have people who are displaced. We have people who need clothes. We need pe people who need clo who needs um, food, and we need we have business owners who are now like in turmoil, no jobs whatsoever, and so forth. 
the local church can minister to these needs. Charity is something that the local church can participate in as it is a group of people. So that's how we can be useful and relevant in this time as Christians. Um, participate actively in those and not just when there's a sense of urgency. Yes, we are to help when there's urgency. But even like throughout the year, have old age home visits, have visits to homeless shelters, have soup kitchens, seek to feel to minister to the needs the most urgent physical needs of those who need help go to the prisons minister pray for them and i'm not just talking about physical needs i'm also talking about bible studies prayers have those bible studies at the old age home have those bible studies at the children's homes have those bible studies not just at orphanages have them also in the prison like homeless shelters Preach God's word to his people. He said, "You, d I do not know you. Say you didn't clothe the naked. You didn't visit the prisons. You didn't visit the hospitals. That's where we need to be as well. Not just in the conference centers looking great, you know, dancing and having fun. Let the local church see to the needs of the communities that they are in. I come from a church where the road, like the road when we drive to church is in a state of chaos. Like it's a mess. Like there is like, not even what are they called potholes there's like dams on the road there's like mini dams and each mini dam has a reservoir like it's it's insane and there's a church where bentley's and these expensive cars drive there every single sabbath why can't we come together and tar the road ourselves why can't we minister to those people on the streets that's a need for them too their children drive up and down that street every single sabbath let's have a sabbath where we're not in church we're doing their gardens we're, we're cleaning the homes of the old people we're on that street we fix the street now let's fix the homes and the people on the street let them see christ in us that's what the local church can do impact positively the direct environment it is in so i think that settles what the local church can do um we can care we can educate we can have charity on a local scale then we move to the most important level that is the individual the individual who is part of the local church that is a part of a denomination can do the most for god practically you can ensure that there is safety for someone in need you can ensure that your time and your effort are spent in ministry and in the type of ministry that you are keen on you can ensure that if the local church is not having programs that are relevant you address it you speak to your leaders in the church you speak to your elders you speak to your deacons you speak to your pastors and your bishops and all of them and you persuade them to be more relevant to the environment you can run a program if there is nothing in your church, you can be the one to say, youth, why don't we get together after church? We cook something quickly and then we go to the streets and we feed the hungry. Like, you can do that. You, no one is stopping you from, do that, from doing that. As the individual, you can say on, on one Sunday every month, let the single mothers bring all their little bambinos to my house. I'll babysit so that you guys can have some time off, so that you can breathe, so that you can enjoy some time to yourself. It's a small gesture, but it is helping in the most essential way. You are giving support where there isn't any. That's why I'm saying the individual can do more for the church than the local or the denomination. It's, it's, it's imperative that we are effective as individuals in order for us to be effective as a church. Because church starts here. The body of Christ is here before it is in a building. Nah, before it is in a policy it starts with me so move as an individual find your purpose seek christ daily do your devotion at work pray before you start hold the hands of your colleagues and lead them to truth speak to them about prophecy speak to them about what the world is coming to whether they are muslim whether they are they are buddhist whether they are baha'i it doesn't matter speak to them about god find out what they know and you you never know where that conversation may lead even later on in life they might come back to you and tell you i have found the true god and I'm thankful or that I find a safe place in you I know I can trust you because you are consistent and you are honest and you are true to your God you never know guys be a true Christian in your life be the Christ to someone be the someone there's, there's this this um, slogan that keeps being passed around in church dare to be like Daniel be the sermon stand out like don't give up on your faith and change it because of the environment you are in 
it, it's imperative for us to move forward as a country as a church as christians it is absolutely vital for us to fix Christianity and to fix what is happening right now when majority of us claim to believe this truth by first fixing ourselves So this has been a very difficult message to deliver and I think To close it off um, I will read the last quote that I hope Really Narrates what I was trying to say all this time and that I hope touches your heart in a special way and encourages you to be different from the Christians in South Africa that we have seen in the past six weeks. It says, the same agencies that barred men away from Christ 18, 1800 years ago are still at work today. The spirit which built up a partition wall between the Jew and Gentile is still active. Pride and prejudice have built strong walls of separation between different classes of men. Christ and his mission have been misrepresented and multitudes feel that they are virtually shut away from the ministry of the gospel. But let them not feel that they are shut away from Christ. There is no barrier which man or Satan can erect that faith cannot penetrate. Amen. In the faith of the Phoenician woman, when she flung herself against the barriers that, have piled, that had been piled up between Jew and Gentiles, amongst discouragement, regardless of appearances, in faith, the Phoenician woman flung herself against the barriers that had piled up between Jew and Gentile. Against discouragement, regardless of the appearances that might have led her to doubt, she trusted the Savior's love. It is thus that Christ desires us to trust him. The blessings of salvation are for every soul. Nothing but his own choice can prevent any man from becoming a partaker in the promise of Christ by the gospel. Chaste, which is like segregation, is hurtful to God. He ignores everything of this character. In his sight, that's God, the souls of men are all equal, and he hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the earth, on the face of the earth, and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him though he be not far from every one of us. Without distinction of age or rank or nationality or religious privilege, all are invited to come unto him and live. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. The rich and the poor meet together, and the Lord is the maker of them all. The same Lord over all the rich unto all call those upon him. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. These are verses from Acts 17, 26, 27, Galatians 3, 28, Proverbs 22, 2, Romans 11, 10 to 13. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what the word of God says. It says that there is no difference between us and our brothers and our sisters. That there is no reason why we should be brutal and violent and gruesome towards one another. It says that the Christians have a role to play. It says that there is no exclusiveness in Christ's kingdom and that we are to shun these attitudes and these prejudices that we have developed over time. If Christians want something, we need to stop picketing like the circular world and we need to stand on the word of God. We cannot, 86% of us, we cannot be Christ-like and effect no change. Then there is something terribly wrong, not with the world, but with us. So in this message, I beckon you to stand up for Christ. I beckon you and I dare you to be like him. And I ask once again, where are you Christian in South Africa? What are you doing? May the Lord be with you in all things. And may he be our greatest guide. Amen.